Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, a developer advocate at Dremio, and I'm making this video to talk a little bit about using uh, DBT with Dremio to make your you know Dremio workflows a lot easier. Okay, um, easier than they already are because they, they it can be pretty uh, easy with the Dremio user interface. But DBT definitely serves a purpose. So first, let's just ex for those who are new to DBT, let me just spend some time uh, explaining uh, what DBT is. Okay, feel free to skip ahead of the scholar up portion of this video if you already kind of are pretty familiar with DBT. But the basic idea is this. Imagine we have data set A. Okay. Let me just make sure that the letter is black. Good. Okay, we have data set A. Now what's going to happen is that maybe I want to make a data set B. Okay, which is derived from data set A. And then separately, we have data set C, which then both of these are used to create data set B. Okay, so moral of the story here is C and B both need to exist before I can create D. Okay. So theoretically, I would want to kind of orchestrate that the order in which I generate these data sets. I want to make sure I generate A and C, then generate B once A exists, and then generate D once B and C exist. So that is essentially what DBT allows us to do. It allows us to kind of uh, be able to express via SQL sort of how one data set relates to another. Okay, so in this case, you know, um, data set B will be like select... You know, and then you'd put whatever you would want to select from letter A. You might cast some columns, whatever. But then you would do is you would use what's called Jinja. So if you've ever done like uh, Python Django or Python Flask and done like web applications with Python, you're probably familiar with Jinja for templating uh, websites. But here it's used for templating uh, your SQL. And you can express certain things. So you might do something like this where basically you are referencing A. So what this basically means is that you are referencing this data set. So don't run. So basically, don't create B until A exists, in a sense. Okay. So essentially, we would have that. And then again, basically, in in this SQL, you might have two references. So you might have ref uh, B somewhere in your SQL because there might be a join in it. Okay. And you would have ref meaning referring to C. And essentially what this will mean is that, hey, this particular query, dbt will say, hey, hey, you're referring to B and C. So until any models or any SQL that relates to B and C has been run, don't run this one on D. Okay, so the beauty is here is you can write the SQL for each of these individual components, each of these views or tables. And basically when you run your dbt models, it will run them in the right order so that way the things that basically anything that one model references will run before that model runs. And essentially each model is SQL that's going to output a certain data set. So essentially you're saying, hey, I am creating a view or a table and this viewer table is the result of this SQL. And that SQL can refer to other models, which will then determine what order they run in. And you can use this in Dremio, because in Dremio, we oftentimes have to craft a semantic layer. So one example of a semantic layer I have is like this tax collections folder. So in this tax collections folder, I have a bronze, silver, gold setup. Okay, and essentially what would happen is I would land the raw data. Okay, so these are purple physical data sets. Okay, these would be the raw data, but then I might want to, you know, dedupe them, uh, clean them up put them in, then would be my silver level data. So these are views on that. And then after that, I might want to join these two tables and then I might move that over to gold. So you see like there's these different sort of steps. And typically what we would do is we would just literally create a physical copy. So these two views would actually be a physical copy of these two tables cleaned up. And then this join here would be a physical copy of these two joined together. But with Dremio, that's not necessary. You can create a semantic layer like this using views. These green uh, items here, they're views, meaning they're not copies, okay? They're just literally like, basically when you run them, you're still scanning the 
the originals, but through a sort of SQL, a pre-made SQL query layer, in a sense. Okay? But usually, I would then manually have to kind of write the SQL and then run the SQL in the right order to create these views, whether they're physical copies or they're views. And this is where DBT can make our life a lot easier. Okay, because then I can express all this whole relationship as DBT models. And then anytime I update the data, I could just rerun my DBT model and it'll update the views. Or if I want to change a particular column or how, you know, how any of the steps in between from, from bronze, the silver, the gold, I can just update my DBT model. I'll rerun it and then all the views will get recreated. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example. Okay, um, cool. So first off, let me just show you how you would set this up. So right now I have a running environment. So let me just hit clear on that. Leave that to the side for a moment. But essentially, if you were to open up to sort of like a empty folder in your on your machine, what you would do is you would have to make sure you have Python installed, but you would create a Python virtual environment. So again, the way you would do that is you do Python dash M V E and B to use the virtual environment module. And then you can name that virtual environment module anything you want. V and V is pretty typical. Typical. I would run this command and that would create my virtual environment folder or environment. And then I can activate that environment by running the command source dot slash VNV, because that's the folder that I just created, slash bin, slash activate. And that would create the Py that would activate the Python environment. Again, just a note that if you're on Windows, that path might be slightly different. It's gonna be, but it'll be in your directory structure. You should be able to kind of find that activate script to turn on the environment, okay, which I already have on. So in this terminal, you see, I already have my virtual environment turned on. I'm able to tell because I have this little V, E, and V parentheses here. Once I have that environment on, I can then install dbt dremio. So I would just do a pip install dbt dremio, and that would install everything that you need. Okay, so everything you need would be in that folder or just by running that one file. Now, in this case, if I wanted to create a new project, what I would then do is just run dbt init. Since I have dbt dremio installed, it's going to know I wanted to do a dremio project. And then I can call it whatever I want. So we'll just say, hey, new project. Okay. Oh, that's right. This, my environment's not on here. So let me turn on the environment. So let me turn on the environment in this terminal so you can actually see it in action. Um, so in this case here, I would do the source dot slash v and v slash bin slash activate. Okay, and then you see I just turned it on so you can see how that changed. Then I'm going to go back into my scratch folder. And now I'll do db dbt init new project. Okay, and essentially what it's going to do, it's now going to ask you several questions about configuring dbt with Dremio. Because the way dbt works is that you can have multiple dbt profiles that are stored in your root folder and your uh, basically it's uh, I'll show you later it's like tilde dbt but i want to connect the dremio so see that's the only option i have because dbt dremio is the only dbt uh, plugin i have currently installed so i hit one i'm connecting the dremio it's going to ask me whether i want to connect the dremio cloud dremio software using a username or password or software with a pat token in this case i'm connecting the dremio cloud which automatically uses a pat token Okay, then it's gonna ask me which API endpoint, depending on whether you're using the European Dremio Cloud or the North American uh, API uh, Dremio Cloud. I'm gonna just choose the default because I've already done this before. So again, this would just be your login email. I'm just gonna skip that. Uh, your, uh, well, it's gonna ask for something. So I'll just put the Dremio, Dremio.example at gmail.com. Okay, this is where you put your personal access token. I'm gonna not put one down. But then it would ask you for your cloud project ID. I'm just gonna put some gibberish down just to illustrate the point. You would get this from your Dremio account. This would be your, Dremio, your specific Dremio project that you're accessing. And then you would put sort of the information for your object storage. Okay, so this would be sort of um, like, for example, in my Dremio account, my object storage source is this one called S3. So that's what I would put here. I would put S3. Okay, and then I would put like a path inside that folder. So, you know, it might be like test.files or folder or something. A path to where you generally want stuff to be stored in that folder. 
And then this Dremio space for Dremio Cloud would point to one of your Dremio Arctic catalogs. So as any of these catalogs, they have the little Arctic symbol right here. So in this case, I'm going to use the Arctic catalog. So I would just say like Arctic. Okay, and then if I wanted to point to a particular folder in that catalog, okay, um, which in this case, I have created a special folder for my DBT practice. So DBT practice, etc. And again, I already have a profile with all this configured. So this is just to show you what I would put here. So this would be like dbt practice dot jan as an example. And then that's it. That creates everything you need. And you see now I have this new project folder. And that would be where I work out of. Okay, we're going to ignore that one because I already created one called test run. And I'll show you what's kind of going on there. This one's already all configured and all set up. Okay, so the main thing you really need here is just really your models. Okay, pretty much you can, for the most part, unless you want to get more advanced with DBT, you can operate pretty much straight out of here in this models folder. Okay, and essentially what's going to happen here is you're going to have several different SQL files and you can create more. Okay, so by default, you'll have this, like my first DBT uh, SQL file and my second DBT SQL file. And the way each of these work is that they are going to have some bit of SQL in there. Okay, so you'll see. And then what it's going to do is that when we run dbt, it's going to run that SQL, and the output of that SQL command will be created as a view in Dremio. So if I go back to Dremio for a moment, you'll see here, if I go to the dbt practice January 9 to 2024, you'll see here that the, one, the, the output of the my first dbt model uh, one came out there. Again, it's just like the number one. So that's just going to come out right there. Okay. Oh, back over here dbt january 9th my first model I'll run that again and this is just the that's just the one column one row with the number one okay and then this one same thing it's just going to create a, another view called my second dbt model because that's what i named the sql file but see this one has that reference okay so you see it's referring to the previous model so in this case, this knows it can't, it should not run until that other model has been run first. Okay. So theoretically here, see, I have like my third model, which refers to this weather. Okay. With this weather data. So for example, I can go here. If I go to my DVD practice folder, I'll have some weather data in here. So let's just run a query on that data first, just to show you. Actually, let me just close all these tabs. Okay. I'm actually just quicker this way weather now if I run right here in the weather data you'll see this weather data that's going to show up and now when I run that third model it's essentially just re creating another view of the same exact data but let me create another view that depends on that one okay and that one we're just going to want the the date and the precipitation that's it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create in a new file. So we'll call this my fourth model dot SQL. And essentially we only want to select. And again, the two things we want to select are date and precipitation PRCP. So date PRCP from but I don't want it from the weather data per se. So again, my third model, I did reference, and see, I can reference anything in my Dremio account. So I was able to just reference that weather data set and say, hey, I just want this view just to be a select all from that data set. And you saw it was created. But now I'm gonna do with this fourth model, I'm gonna say, hey, I want to do that to reference. And I wanna reference my third model okay because that's what we called it there okay and again just to compare syntax ref my third model i see that i use single quotes so i'll just to be safe i will use single quotes as well okay ref my single model okay and then that'll be what that that model comes out to now just doing a quick double check on everything Okay, otherwise it all looks good. But the idea is that I would create all my models and then in the future, it, well, first let's run it. So let's see here, let's do dbt run. So I would just do dbt run. 
Okay, I'm actually do that in the right folder. So right here in the test run folder. I would do dbt run. It's going to run all the models that are in the folder. So right now it's going to go detect all the models. Okay. So it's going to take a moment to run that. Okay, just a clarification. I made a quick typo. I forgot. I should, since date is a reserved word, I should have put double quotes around it. So I'm going to go run that again. So here we go. Let's try that again. dbt run. Okay, awesome. And now I ran that successfully. And if I see, I can see that it detected the four models. It ran each model and it's going to create the right output. So now if I go back to Dremio, I should be able to go back to my data view, go back to dbt practice, go back to January 9, 2024 here and see there's my fourth model. And my fourth model should only have those two fields, date and precipitation. Okay, so then there, yep, it only has date and precipitation. So how cool is that? Okay, so now what happens if in the future, like I have a data consumer who is using this view and they're like, you know what, I need another column, Alex. Okay, what I could really use is another one of those columns. So let's choose one of these other columns in the weather data. Okay, let's choose snow. So maybe they want that snow column. Okay, well, we can do all we have to do now is head back to our dbt models. I can just add snow. Okay, so simple as that to fulfill this data request to just add a column that wasn't there before. Okay, and then again, I know if this particular and by reading this query, I know that this refers to a different model. So I can go check to make sure that 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 the snow column is available in that model, making it easier for me to kind of catch where I need to make these changes. And again, all of this is in a, I can version control with Git because it's code. Um, and then I can just run that dbt model again. Okay, and it can add that column. Okay, so see now that that has ran again successfully. So now all I have to do is head back. Let's go back to our data explorer. Let's go back to dbt practice, January 29th. And let's see here, does my fourth model, does it now have, uh, you know, the extra snow column? Okay, and it does. Okay, so it becomes easy as that. So I'm the data consumer. I'm just like, hey, cool. The column was added to the view that I've been working with. And the, as a data engineer, all you had to do was just add one word in one column. And again, everything becomes easily trackable because you can track it through code ver version control. But also these views have version control. Okay, because again, these Arctic catalogs, okay, have version control. So when I go back to my Arctic catalog here, and I go click over here, because again, part of Dremio's data lakehouse management features, I can go see these commits and I can see these ultra views on the fourth model. So if, in case I wanted to roll back and say, hey, you know what? I actually didn't want to make that change to my that view. I can identify the commit from when that dbt job began by just take, kind of looking through here and taking a look at the timestamp, whatnot, find the commit right before it, and I can roll back my catalog to that. So that way, if something goes wrong, disaster recovery isn't too difficult. So you have version control of your catalog. You can use Git to do version control of your dbt models. So you have very robust disaster recovery and management and visibility over this whole setup, which is also just generally pretty easy. So again, cool things when you start mixing a lot of these really amazing modern technologies here uh, in today's world. My name is Alex Merced, developer advocate here at Dremio. I'll see you all later. Have a great day and enjoy.